All right, y'all. It's Urban Praise. I am Effie. Um, wow, I am just totally ecstatic today. I have, you know, she's been on my prayer list, and that's to interview her. <laughs> And look at God. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. I am so excited to be talking to none other than, I mean, she's just a powerhouse, New York Times bestselling author, teacher, evangelist. Uh, she and her husband has Going Beyond Ministries. She's a trusted voice in the faith community, actress, or actress rather. I mean, you know the hit movie, War Room, okay? And also The Forge, released on August. It's going to come up August 23rd. And also she has an upcoming book i surrender all but we've been hearing her teaching like all the time i am talking about none other than i want to say doctor <laughs> priscilla <laughs> shire god bless you how are you doing <laughs> oh miss effie thank you so much for having me i'm doing well how are you I am great. Blessed by the best. Wow. What an honor to have you. I mean, just such a beautiful woman. I mean, inside and out. Uh, okay. I got it. I got to ask you something. First of all, how do you find time to balance? Because you do it all. I mean, you're a teacher, you're an actress. Uh, I mean, you, you, you just, you're all over the world speaking to millions. How do you have time to do all that? <laughs> well, the thing is, I don't do all that at the same time. That's the, that's, <laughs> that's the kicker okay. right there. So I remember some older, wiser women uh, early on in my 20s just telling me and reminding me about the power of having courage enough to say no, of determining with the Lord what your priorities are in a particular season of your life, and then saying whatever no's you need to say so that you can honor those priorities. And so I really don't do everything at the same time. I I try to, my husband and I, ask the Lord in this season, what's the priority? And then we just try to keep the main thing the main thing and not feel bad about the other mm. things that have to fall by the wayside for a season so that we can honor those priorities. Well, you do it well. Whatever you're doing, you're doing it well. So please continue. Oh, thank and thanks you. for being obedient. First of all, I want to just say you kind of make the Bible come alive. You know, your, your teaching style, you make people understand it. It's clear. It's plain. Uh, it comes alive. And I know it impacts, you know, everything you do, your evangelism, your writing uh, around the globe. But how has your father, which we love, <laughs> the one and only Dr. <laughs> Tony Evans, you. how much has his teaching style impacted your teaching style and method methodology? And, um, you know, because we love his analogies, but how how has it impacted you and tell me is it difficult to separate your style from your dad you know or or do and I know I'm asking you a couple of questions uh is it difficult to not try and live up to him or do people even compare you to him very interesting it was about four questions when you just, that's okay that's okay even <laughs> when you started formulating the questions I was already thinking about daddy because you know I'm so grateful to say mm -hmm. as an adult child now that I had a dad, have a dad, and had a mother, she's in heaven now, who really did show me about the purity of ministry in that they have integrity. Like, I, I just didn't grow up with a duplicitous household where my parents were one way in public and then another way in private. I recognize mm -hmm. now that that's not a lot of stories for people that grew up in church or are PKs. They, they just didn't see pure ministry. So I'm just, I feel incredibly grateful for that now. And, you know, the, the church that I still attend to this day is the church my parents started when I was one. So since oh, I was wow. one year old, I have heard nothing except weekly, integral Bible teaching from a master communicator. And again, mm -hmm. in the moment, you don't realize what's happening. But basically, I was in a master class my whole life for communication yes. skills but also for handling properly God's word. So I do not take lightly the, the, the entrustment of that, that God would let me sit and watch that every week to absorb the spiritual depth of it, to, to absorb how to communicate it to a congregation or an audience that needs to really be able to absorb and internalize spiritual truths that sometimes can be theoretical. And so to make them practical is something that my dad always did. So, yes, mm -hmm. I learned so much from how to communicate the Bible, to handle it properly, to walk in ministry with integrity, not perfection, but with integrity as the overarching theme of a life. I glean that from my dad. And 
I will say to answer your other question, early on in my ministry, I think there was a lot of internal pressure that I put on myself that, you know, if someone was inviting me to speak, I knew that they were inviting me because dad is dad. And, and maybe I felt like I needed to fill those shoes. But over time, can I just tell you, we've had a lot of jokes about this as a family, that the tables have turned a little bit. Now dad goes places and they say to him, oh, this is Priscilla Shire's father. And so we've really just had a great time as a family uh, making fun of him in that regard. <laughs> oh, wow. No, yeah, that ha that is a change. Wow. But you guys are so amazing. I mean, your family, you're like to teaching and preaching the word of God, similar to what the Clark sisters and the Winans are to gospel, oh. gospel music. You know what I'm saying? You guys, all oh. of you are so talented. Wow. So gifted, so blessed. Oh, praise the Lord. Uh, to God be the glory. Yes. Okay. One more question about your dad. When did you realize he was Dr. Tony Evans and not just Anthony Tyrone Evans? <laughs> a senior? Now, when did you realize he was, on, he was Dr. Tony Evans? Government name. <laughs> <laughs> when did you realize that it. growing up? You know, it was when I was in college because, you know, okay. college was the first time that I moved away and outside of the bubble of our local church. So I was just, mm. you know, outside with people who did not go to our church, didn't know about our local church, but they still knew about dad because of his national radio ministry. And that mm. was around the same time in the 90s when Promise Keepers, the men's movement Promise Keepers was, was at its height. And so when dad started speaking at Promise Keepers, oh my goodness, all of a sudden, you know, we really couldn't go anywhere without people, even if they didn't know dad's face, they would hear his voice just in conversation at dinner or in the, in the checkout aisle at Walmart, and they would hear his voice and go, oh, my goodness, are you Dr. Tony Evans? So I think as soon as I got outside of our local bubble, which was in college, and I realized that people were being encouraged by this man's ministry on the radio and in conference settings and outside of that bubble, it occurred to me, oh my gosh, my dad's making an impact that is way beyond Camp Wisdom and Polk, which are the two streets that intersect right where our local church still is to this day in Dallas. What a blessing. Again, hey, thank God for what you do, because you have blessed, you guys have blessed so many people and still are. Uh, okay, we're going to get to the movie in a second. Your teaching, um, you know, again, you, I, I know a lot of people who feel like you're similar to Kay Authors. I mean, she's a wonderful, renowned a Bible you know, teacher. Would you give us a recap of the five P's of your Bible study and what we can do during our Bible study time? Oh, my goodness. I'm so glad you asked me that. Um, the five, what I call the five P's, the letter P, the five P's of Bible study have really transformed my relationship with the Lord through his word. Like the whole point of reading the Bible is not so you and I can just say, all right, we've read a verse a day to keep the devil away. Like it's not a to-do list sort of thing. We're supposed mm -hmm. to actually be cultivating a friendship with the author of the book and know that we can hear his voice through it. So these five P's help me to engage with God when I read a verse or two or three. The first P of Bible study is to prepare yourself to hear from God. That means both spiritually to come to the pages of scripture with an expectation, like I expect that this is God breathed and it's living and that God can speak to me now. And then you also prepare yourself physically. Like, are you in a space where you have room and margin um, to be able to clear the airways, the, the earways of all the noise of your to-do list and of your um, the, the background noise in our lives? Have you shut off your phone for the 10 minutes or just found a quiet spot, which, you know, for many of us, when we have small kids and stuff, the only quiet spot in the house is the bathroom. Like, you got to go in the bathroom. <laughs> and sit on the edge of the bathtub so that you can have a minute, you know? Uh -huh. So whatever you have to do to prepare yourself, and then just to race through these quickly, prepare yourself to hear from God, and then um, uh, paraphrase the scriptures. So basically, when you read a verse, then write it down in a, in a paraphrase. Write it down in a shortened way that uses the same words right out of the passage, but so you can have something on paper that shows you what the verse says. The third P is pull out the spiritual principle. Look at the phrase, you, the, the paraphrase you just wrote down and ask your, the Lord, what is the spiritual principle here? Is there a promise I'm supposed to heed? Is there a part of God's character that I am supposed to now enjoy and understand and bank on? Is there a directive I'm supposed to follow? The fourth mm. P is pose the question. And that's when you take that spiritual principle and you turn it into the form of a personally directed question. You basically ask yourself, 
Am I living in a way that lines up with the spiritual principles that I just wrote down on this piece of paper? Do I trust God in the way it's telling me to trust God? Have I lined my life up, my attitude up to what this scripture verse says? So, for example, if the verse says to be still and know that I am God, well, then I ask myself, Am I being still in this situation in my life where I need to honor God and trust him, or am I trying to manipulate and control it and hurry it along? And then the fifth P is plan uh, plan obedience and plan a date to obey, meaning when God speaks, like when we feel that conviction, because once you start asking yourself them questions, the Holy Spirit's going to start giving you an answer. And once you feel the weighty conviction of God's spirit to realign our life or our attitude in a particular way, then plan to obey, like enlist accountability, be, be um, strategic and intentional in honoring God, because when he speaks, he does not just speak to be heard, he speaks to be obeyed. Love it. Well, that's a powerful um you know, practice if, if we all just do it, right? We just need to do it. Uh, but I'm sure I'd have to write those down and just really take it day by day and step by step. But I know that's going to get me and keep us on the right path. Thank you for sharing those uh, powerful peas. <laughs> uh, we're talking to Priscilla Shire, y'all, the one and only, who is getting ready to be in the movie, uh, another Kendrick Brother production in theaters, August 23rd, The Forge. You guys know her from The War Room. You know her from Overcomer. Okay, Priscilla, are you like on the on-call list for the Kendrick Brothers movies? They just call you like <laughs> whenever they're going to have a movie. Well, I, I don't know if that is the case. <laughs> I do know that they are my brothers and I'm their sister, meaning we both can't believe that the Lord has lined our paths up like this to be able to do ministry together in this way. So, you know, I've known them for 15 years and I'm not in the film industry. Like I'm not a trained, skilled actress. So oh, you couldn't tell me realize, not. You couldn't tell me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, listen, I'm glad it's working out because, you know, we've all seen movies before, especially faith-based movies, where Mm. it could have been good, but there was that one person who thought they could act, and Lord have mercy, they messed up the whole thing. So I feel so grateful that the Lord has given Kendrick, the Kendrick Brothers stories, and that those stories are not corny, that they are meaty and meaningful, and then that we happen to live in an era where production companies are seeing the value all of us are placing on these unapologetic Jesus films. The only reason they keep funding them is because we keep showing up to the theaters and saying, uh, yes, we want the war room. We want Jesus name to be exclaimed without apology. We don't want a sugar coated gospel and we want good, excellent, entertaining cinematography to match it. So the fact that Mm. um, I get to keep partnering with my brothers in this way Man, it feels like a gift to me, and hopefully it'll be a gift to others. Yeah, I'm sure. I've seen I've seen just a little bit of the trailers and stuff, and just you guys talking about it, doing different scenes. So far, so great, okay? <laughs> it is amazing. Right. Was it difficult for you to play two characters? <laughs> um, you know, it was interesting. I'll say that. Not necessarily difficult, but completely intriguing and consuming to have to mm. think of how you're relating to your own self. And people will see when they see the film what we're referring to, but it, it is a dynamic using AI and technology in a way I never had any experience with before. So it was super interesting to try to cause these sisters to interact with each other using green screen and technology and all of those wonderful advances that allow us to do uh, things like that on screen. Okay, now prayer and discipleship, right? Those are kind of like the key themes of the movie. How important is that for the church to do that right now? Oh, man, it's everything for the church. Um, Jesus said, my house should be called a house of prayer. Like, that's the whole point not a house of good preaching and not a house of good singing or a house of good production quality. All of those things are fine and we can enjoy them. But the house is supposed to be called and known for the fact that people are up in there praying, that we recognize that prayer is what pushes back the kingdom of darkness. And it is the key that almighty God has given us to unlock the resources of heaven and have them unleashed onto the landscape of earth. Why wouldn't we prioritize a key like that? 
So that theme of prayer is threaded throughout, just like War Room. It's threaded throughout this movie, The Forge. And then I'd say the main theme is discipleship. And that is also the call and the mandate of Christ to his people. Matthew 28, go therefore and make disciples. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Discipleship is where one life impacts another life, where you are walking with somebody who can help you see how to apply scriptural principles to your real life, like every marriage needs a couple that is 10 or 15 years, 20 years down the road so that you can be encouraged in how to be a husband, how to be a wife that honors those roles as set out in the scripture. Every entrepreneur needs a more seasoned business builder who will hold their hand and say, let me show you how to be a good steward of your finances and your leadership while you build this business. And I can show you how because I've done it. And here are the mistakes that I've made. Here's what the Lord's taught me. Let me help you walk out our faith in the regular rhythms of everyday living. That's what the church is supposed to be, the body of Christ discipling one another. I got to ask you this, Priscilla, because that sounds great on paper. It sounds great. But, you know, uh-huh. a lot of times I think we're a little stingy with our with our gifts. We're stingy sometimes with, you know, with sharing with others. Can you, like, really just quickly tell someone the importance of doing it? Why? How? Because I think sometimes we feel like it's going to take away from us. You know, it's going to take away. Yeah. If I give you too much information, then you may surpass me or, you know, you may shine brighter than mine. But can you kind of just really quickly just tell us why we need to do it? Yes, because if you think about it, it's one of the schemes of the enemy is to get us competing with each other instead of unifying around the common purpose of building the kingdom and honoring God. And so if he can get us competing with one another, jealous of one another, holding back from sharing and supporting one another, then he's caused there to be division. And where there is division, there's weakness. So when you Mm. recognize it's a scheme of the enemy to keep us self-centered, self-absorbed, self-obsessed, and not focused on the people whom the Lord, here's the word, entrusts to us. Like, Mm. oh my gosh, I wish I was in the studio with you right now, because I could tell you (laughs) and I could just talk all day about yes, and oh, but, yes. <laughs> yes, we could. But w- when I look back on my life in my early 20s, and, and I'm sure there are people, when you think about it, back to your teenage years, your 20s, had it not been for a person older, wiser than you that affirmed you, even by just looking you in the eyes and listening to you it, about your struggles and your issues and your concerns. If that 26-year-old hadn't paid attention to you when you were 16, or that 27, or that uh, 38-year-old didn't pay attention to you when you were 26, just trying to start out and kick off on your own in that business or whatever, you realize now in hindsight the trajectory of your life changed because someone placed value on you and was able to offer wisdom. And once you realize how the Lord entrusted you to other people and that those people took the mandate and they were willing to invest in you, now it makes you at this phase in your life want to say, okay, Lord, it's my turn. Who can you use me to to impact so that their life can best glorify you and honor you? Which almost brings me to your book, but I got to remind people, the movie The Forge starring Priscilla Shire is out August 23rd in theaters. Y'all got to see it. You've got to see it because she does an amazing job. The entire cast does an amazing job. And how many family members do you have, Priscilla, in the movie? (laughs) Did you notice my husband is in the movie, my youngest son is in the movie, and my brother, my baby brother, Jonathan, is also there. They are a part of the discipleship scenes where you see these older men coupled with younger men encouraging each other. Um, uh, there are three of my family members that are a part of that of that group, those group scenes. <laughs> did I see a few nieces? Oh, you did see a niece. <laughs> That's right. You did. We just, look, yes. just keep tossing people in there from the family. <laughs> I said, it's a family movie, y'all. Come on out. It's a faith family movie for real. And you're going to love it. August 23rd, The Forge with 
Priscilla Shire. And you've also got your book coming out, I Surrender All, as you were talking about, you know, really committing to the Lord and blessing others, you know, with your gifts. And trusting is the key word you were saying too. I Surrender All. Tell us about the upcoming book. And again, I, I'm in the back of my mind, I'm saying, how do you do it all? Because that's coming out this month as well. Yes, ma'am. Well, the theme is exactly what the title implies. You remember that old hymn back in the day when we had hymnals, those red cover mm-hmm. hymnals mm-hmm. in our churches? Mm-hmm. And we sang, I Surrender All. It was a simple, pure chorus that just reminded us that the purpose of being in relationship with Christ is to surrender everything to him. Like, it's not just a Sunday morning thing. Every part of our Monday and our relationships on Tuesday and our financial decisions on Wednesday and how we govern ourselves as as wives, as single women, as husbands, um, as children, all of it on Thursday and Friday and Saturday, that every part of our life is supposed to be surrendered to him. Um, Salvation, thank God, it's free. It's a free Mm -hmm. gift, and I'm so grateful for that. But discipleship comes at a cost. Jesus said in Luke chapter 9, if anybody's going to be my disciple, they're going to have to deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. That sounds like Mm. sacrifice and surrender. Are we willing to surrender the things that the Lord is asking us to loosen our grip on? These aren't necessarily issues of sin, by the way. Sometimes there are things that are not sinful in and of themselves. It's just that they have taken too much priority in our lives, and now they are in first place instead of him being in first place. So when he asks us to loosen our grip so that he can take his post, as the master of our lives, as the one to whom our love and allegiance is dedicated, are we willing to surrender those things that we love to honor our relationship with him as true disciples? I surrender all, even though all sounds so intimidating, but yep. <laughs> like you were saying, it's about, hey, do you want to be in it or or whatever? You know, do you want to be in it? And you got to get in yeah. it to win it, right? You have to get in it to yeah. win it and really... Uh, give it your all, but it really does sound int- intimidating. But I'm thinking, what for some people, you just say, "Hey, take baby steps or steps, or just do it by faith," because some people feel like it's so much, so much that I don't even know I got. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. do I just you know what? jump I'm in? So glad you brought. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad mm-hmm. you brought that up, Miss Effie, because it can feel intimidating, except when we remember that it's the Holy Spirit's work in us to conform us Mm -hmm. to the image of Christ, meaning it's his responsibility and privilege to help us continue to grow day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year, Mm -hmm. that when we are prayerfully 70 and 80 and 90, we still Mm -hmm. will not have arrived anywhere, that it's progressive. So we don't have to feel like tomorrow I have to have it all together. No, Lord, I'm going to walk by the Spirit today. What are you asking me to surrender today? Help me to walk in obedience today. And then knowing that his grace is so sufficient that not only does it cover us when we have missteps and mistakes, because we all will, but his grace is so powerful that it is retroactive, that he can go back and give you the years that the locusts have sought to steal away from you and restore back to you that which you think is completely lost. So don't despair. Don't get intimidated. Don't run the opposite direction. Just say, Lord, give me grace for today, my daily bread for today. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to walk by the spirit day by day as I continue to grow in you. That sounds so much easier, (laughs) but I know, I know it's going, you know, it's going to be, yeah, we can do it. We can do it in Jesus name. All right. Priscilla Shire, I Surrender All, the new book coming out later this month. It's available where, Priscilla? It's available really wherever books are sold, you know, wherever you find yours online or in uh, bookstores. If there are still local bookstores in your area, <laughs> I miss them so much. I but know. even anywhere online that books are sold, you'll be able to find it. I hope it'll be a blessing to you. It will. And out of all your roles, I got to ask you this. Which one do you, besides being a mom and a wife, which one do you prefer most? I would. Oh, my goodness. That's a very good question. Out of all my roles outside of motherhood and wifehood, I would probably say the teaching uh, ministry, speaking, preaching and teaching. I love getting to stand in front of a group of people, whether it's 10 people or 10,000, because as I'm speaking to them, you can see on their faces when something lands, when a principle hits their soul, when the Holy Spirit's saying more to them then you could ever communicate in a general message, but you can see him personalizing it to them. Just the sense of 
satisfaction and knowing that the Lord is doing something in people's hearts. I love being able to see that on people's faces as I'm speaking. How can people follow you? I'm, yeah, just tell us how to connect and follow Priscilla Shire. Of course. Well, the movie, um, theforgemovie.com, that's the website, theforgemovie.com. If you want to find out where The Forge is playing the weekend of August 23rd, which it will be in a theater near you. It's opening up nationwide, so wherever you are, it'll be there. You can find out all the details there. But then in terms of just if you're wanting to follow me or see, um, allow us the privilege of ministering to you more personally at Priscilla Shire. I know my last name's a little hard to spell, but if you just kind of Google that and then find us at Priscilla Shire across social media platforms, it would be a pleasure to serve you. Oh, God bless you. New York Times bestselling author, teacher, evangelist. I mean, she's just a trusted voice in the community, faith community, and beyond. Uh, Again, she'll be in the movie, The Forge, August 23rd. Make sure you go and check it out. And her new book, I Surrender, all later this month. Y'all, we are so thankful for Dr. Priscilla Shire. God bless you. Thank you for your time. I know we went a little bit over, but thank you so much. And may God continue to bless you in every way. I'm so grateful. Thank you, sister. Okay. Love you. Hey, it's Urban Praise, everybody.